challenge that we have as believers is believing and trusting God for ourselves. You know, we can always believe God for others and trust God for others and bold enough to tell other people, say, you have to trust the Lord. But how does that work for ourselves? And, and sometimes we fall short because even though we can have faith for others, how strong is your faith for yourself? And that's part of a challenge that all Christians experience Every now and then, I put it that way. But God has a way of bringing the light back into your life. You know, sometimes we allow our light to dim down or, or somewhat even diminish based on the challenges that we're confronted with. And we have to realize that Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. And the thing about it, he came to give us not only light, but he also come to restore and bring that light back into our lives. You know, in the midst of darkness, you know, as a believer, you will always prevail because if God is for you, who or what can be against you? And I try to place the emphasis on you are that light. The Bible said that from our flesh side, men love darkness. And the challenge is that when God's spirit is present, when God's spirit is present, God's word and the very first thing God spoke into darkness was let there be light. Now, I bring that because, see, sometimes we wonder why all this darkness or why we're under the veil of a lot of darkness in our life. But you've got to realize that, that God's word and the very first thing God said in creating the earth was let there be light. And, and I want to just place it. Go to first John because it's some things that we did last week that I want to kind of bring out. But it's some scriptures I want to get to this week to even enhance what we shared with last week. Now, over in first John 4th chapter... And this is the very beginning, and, 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 and this is a part of our topic. The Word of God says in 1 John, 4th chapter, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. It goes on to say, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Please over underline, underline, underline that word, overcome. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Well, the challenge, and we, and we all must understand this, that it takes God's spirit inside of you to activate or, or to, to implement what God has for you in your life. Now, I started off last week over in Genesis, and we looked at it in the very first chapter of Genesis. First chapter, and this gets back to what I'm trying to make sure I want to get soaked down into your spirit. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was, was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. See, sometimes we feel like darkness is all over. Oh, I can't get ends to meet. This is not right. Everybody's against me. Oh, every time I go up, I fall back down. Every time I get up, a deeper hole comes. See, we, we, we allow ourselves to, to get into a state of, of darkness based on what's coming out of our mouth, but what mainly is what's residing within our spirit. The challenge I put before you, that the spirit of the living God always directs those who are alive with him. God speaks very vehemently in his word that he is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Even though sometimes you may feel that you're just dead. Oh, nobody wants to be around me. Nobody likes me. Oh, things just never seem to go my way. You know, Lord, Lord, have thou forsaken me? No, he has not forsaken you. The challenge is, have you forsaken yourself? See, sometimes we can find ourselves feeling so depressed. And I'm talking about believers now. I'm talking about believers. 
I'm talking about the people who go under the name of Christians. And that word Christian means anointed ones. When we hear that word Christ, Christ is that term is anointed ones. This is why we always refer to the name Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus, putting the anointed one. You know, you come out as one of his disciples or supposedly one of his disciples to say you're a Christian, which means anointed one. And if you have that anointing upon you, we know the scriptures say it takes the anointing to destroy the yokes. I asked this morning, what kind of yokes are you experiencing this morning? What kind of spirit did you wake up with this morning? We realize, too, that, that what spirit is really or have you been allowing to direct your life? In, in that passage, it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the Spirit, it says, of God, the second verse, moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided, the word says, the light from darkness. Every time God created something, God's spirit has to be present. We spoke about this last week. There, there might be some areas in your life that there's some light in, but there might be some other areas in your life where it's full of darkness. It could be in your finances. It could be in your health. It could be in your relationships. You know. It could be even in your way of thinking. You know. Where in on other areas, it, it's just an abundance of things. You've allowed the light to come into those areas of your life, but in other parts of your life, it's still full of darkness. The Bible says, when God, before God created anything, you read that right in Genesis, he first put his spirit there. And once his spirit was there, he said, let there be light. Are you allowing yourself, not allowing the light to come into those areas? For darkness has been prevailing all these years. Jesus said he came to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. If you're not living that abundant part of their facets in your life or, or places in your life where it's still full of darkness, you've got to ask yourself, is God's spirit there? Have you allowed God's spirit to reside there? The Bible tells us that these battles is not ours, but the Lord's. But that's based on your faith and your trust in God's word. You know, the Bible also said, and we've been speaking about this for the last couple of weeks, over in the book of Psalms 107, he said, God sent his word to heal and to deliver. God's word was sent to heal and to deliver, deliver us from what? Well, to first, to heal us from our own broken challenges that we've allowed to be placed upon ourselves. And also to, to deliver us from even our way of thinking, our way of talking, our way of perceiving things. You see, a man is righteous in his own eyes. You know, you ever been around people that they never wrong, it's always someone else's fault? Well, we were, that's another teaching, but I'm just saying that a man is righteous in his own eyes. Just ask him. The challenge is that are you really right? You see, I'd rather walk in righteousness than right. Because if I'm walking in righteousness, I'm walking in the light of God and God's word. And it's better to be in the righteous standing of God than be in the rights of your own flesh. Your flesh is always seeking rights. Your flesh is always fighting for its rights. But the challenge is believers, we need to walk more in righteousness than in rights. And when you walk in righteousness, those rights will be there. But they will be there, not temporarily, but permanent. Why? Because you're walking in the light of God. And darkness can never overthrow light unless that light has been turned off. One of the challenges that, that I was looking at here, and, and this is one of the things that you, uh, I don't keep bringing this up, about you trying the spirit. This morning when you woke up, what spirit were you in? Were you in a jovial spirit, happy spirit, or were you in a down and out type of spirit? You see, as believers, the joy of the Lord is your strength. We need to turn that, 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 that expression on our lips 
from downward to upward. Because it takes God's joy to strengthen us. Understanding your fussing won't get anything, won't get you anywhere. I always use this expression, and the Bible says, let vengeance be mine, said the Lord. And unforgiveness is one of the things that, that holds us back from walking in the Spirit of God. Because see, God's Spirit is love. And, and when God's Spirit is, is present, nothing but joy and love is also there. That's part of that light that resides in us. And, but the challenge is, whenever you feel that your flesh has been hurt, the first thing that comes in your mind is that you want some payback, so you're going to try to get some get back to get some payback, but you're only leading yourself to a state of setbacks. Anytime you try to take it into your own hands, with that get back because I've got the payback, you've already put in motion setbacks in your life. Let that go. Let that go. The battle is never yours when you trust God, but the Lord. Only thing you have to fight is the good fight of faith. Oh, oh, Pastor, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know what, what went on. You don't know what happened. I don't care. The part is God knows. God knows. God knew what was going to happen before it happened, but God was going to see how you was going to react to what the challenge is. Were you going to try to handle it yourself, or were you going to trust him? I keep saying, bring the light. Don't go back to darkness. Bring the light into that situation, and that darkness will never prevail. It will never conquer you. That's when that word overcome comes into play. Why are you overcomers? Because I keep the light on in my life. I keep that spirit of God present in my life. Those areas where darkness has been trying to grow in, I bring the light into that light. Why? Because God's spirit is there. And when God said, let there be light, that light is a stationary, ongoing, never running out of power part of my life. That's what that light is all about. The challenge is, is that, and, and this thing that, that comes out, and, 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 and you know, one of the things I hear, well, God knows my heart. Well, I, I heard it the other day, and I'm going to say it to you. Well, God may know your heart, but God hasn't seen your face in a while. Knowing your heart and not seeing your face because you have not allowed him to come there, you know, he said, you honor me with your, with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. You don't want him to know your heart, especially when you're still walking in darkness. What God needs to know is your face. He needs to be able to see you more, trusting and believing in him. So don't tell me about God knows my heart. God, he may know you, but he have not seen your face. Trust him. Believers, we have the victory. We are overcomers, but we have to first learn how to overcome by allowing the Spirit of God to dwell in those dark areas in our life. So that that word that God first said when he created the, earth, created the earth said, let there be light, can come in and remove those dark areas, prevail over those dark areas, conquer those dark, allow you to overcome those dark areas that tried to come in or already present there. That is one of our challenges. One of the things is I was studying this lesson, and, and there's so much to this right here. And I told you it's going to take me three Sundays. But there was a there was a scripture over in 2 Corinthians. I want you to turn there with me if you can, because I, I tell you, there's just so much to this right here. That that it, it's we just start talking about the gospel, and that term gospel in the Greek term, it it it, it, it comes in from a Greek standpoint, a Hebrew standpoint, being evangelio, or it comes into another state to talk about. Good tides, or good tidings, or good news, or glad tidings. That's what the gospel presents. And the other, it comes also in other interpretations, meaning the truth. The truth. When you hear about the four gospels, you hear about the truth. And, and, and one of the things that that uh, uh, that God wants us to walk in is the truth. It tells us that in First John, He said, "Here that we walk in the truth," and that's a blessing, because when you walk in the truth. That means that you know the truth. And once you know the truth, the scripture said, the truth shall make you free. 
Sometimes we need to be free from our own selves, brothers and sisters. I know that's a bold statement, but it's true. Sometimes the worst enemy you have is you because you're carrying the wrong spirit that's challenging the wrong things in your life. Flesh always tries to fight flesh when it's a spiritual battle. If you're going through spiritual warfare, your flesh won't win. The only thing it's going to do is bring on its demise and make it less, how I say, favorable in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Because you're not trusting in Him. The Bible said that the just must live by faith. Now faith is the substance of things hopeful, but it's the evidence of things not seen. If you could see it, it wouldn't take faith. But, but back over here, I need to get over here to 2 Corinthians. There's something I want to, for us to just to share over here in 2 Corinthians. And it was, uh, it's, it's part of, uh, of what, you know, I'm probably going to see if I can complete this part of the day. 2 Corinthians, go over to the fourth chapter. You know, I'm talking about the truth right now. What, what is really the truth? Of what's going on in your life right now. Are you living by faith? Or are you living by flesh? Are you trusting more in your flesh. To make you an overcomer? Or are you trusting more in God's word? You see. God won't back your flesh. But God will back his word. The Bible said that God. Watches over his word. To perform it. And did read what God watches over your flesh. To perform it. Because if your flesh and God's word are in opposite direction, God will not, you know, build up your flesh and, and bring down his word. Somewhere I read, he's a jealous God. And he will allow your flesh to override what his word says it will and shall do. The Bible tells us to bring, as believers, to bring our flesh under subjection to God's word. You've got to bring it under. True worship of God, have to worship God in spirit and in truth, not in flesh and in truth. But but over here in 2 uh, Corinthians, 4th chapter, drop down, four, I'm sorry, 2 second, second Corinthians, 4th chapter, drop down to the 3rd verse. It says, But if our gospel, talking about our truth, be hid, it is hid in them that are lost. Are you lost today, brother and sister? Or are you just confused? Well, sometimes you feel lost because you know, I do this and I do that. I go to church. I read the Bible every now and then. I try to meet church on Easter. Maybe sometimes I catch it on Christmas. But if stuff is hid from you pertaining to God's word, maybe it's time for you to open this Bible and allow it to reveal itself so you can really find out where you're going and what God has for you. Here's a challenge. It says, but if our gospel, our truth be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. In other words, we can get so caught up in the world and the things of the world that we forget who even created the world. And sometimes when you need answer, you don't need answer from, from those who are just like you, who just become, who just passing through. You need to get an answer who created it and what part you play in the creation. See, the challenge is every new soul that comes here on the earth has a part to play. But the person to ask that of is not the one who just also just got here, but the person who created it. He knows why you were created and what your purpose was. And when you walk in the purpose that God has for your life, you will always walk victorious. Believe me, brothers and sisters, you will always walk victorious. There are people who have walked this earth their whole lives and never was happy. Why? They didn't walk in the anointing in which this world had for them if they fulfilled that anointing God created them for. He goes on and he says, In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, the truth of the anointing, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We're in God's image. You're created in God's image. It goes in the fifth verse, For we preach not ourselves, 
but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Verse 6 says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In other words, what, what this passage really saying that you've got a light inside of you, God has placed that light, that light has a specific anointing to do, but that light won't come on until you release it. Your will must allow God's spirit to reside and do what it does best, and that's bless its recipients. We allow the cares of the world to circumvent or to hold back the true light that God has for our life here on the earth. Jesus came so he can give you light and give it to you more abundantly. abundantly. But he wants to make sure in order to give you that light, he's coming in to tell you, you've got to turn that light on. You've got to allow God's spirit to get back in so it can bring forth what you were created to do. So you can walk in the abundancy of God's word and not into the, the fall of man's worldly conscience or your flesh. It says in here, verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Verse 8, we are troubled on every side yet not distress. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about the body in the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our, in our body. In other words, Jesus came to conquer. He came to bring life. He came to bring peace. He came to bring love. And when we receive him into our life, those things are restored. Those things come to fruition. Those things prevail over any and all things that this world may throw your way. That's how you become overcomers. That light, that spirit of God, presence in your life. Where the spirit of God is, there's peace, there's joy, there's love. But there's the conquering force that God brings with his spirit. You hear this term about the Holy Ghost and it's the Holy God, which is God's spirit inside of you. It says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I will repeat that. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He goes on. Verse 11 again, he says, For we which live are always delivered unto death. For Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. Are you speaking the truth about your life and your light? Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things, the scripture says, are for your sake, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound in the glory of God. Verse 16, I love these two verses coming up. For we, for which cause we faint not. Don't go weary in well-doing. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Verse 17, for our light affliction, and that's what they are, brothers and sisters, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For we look not at the things which are seen, faith, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Boy, that sounds like faith. 
Have you spoken to that area in your life today that faith wants to show itself? That part of your life where darkness is always conquered and, 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 and made you feel less than with who you really are. That part of your life that you can't seem to excel in, that it seems that, that it always keeping you back and you can't understand because there's something in your spirit letting you know that this is not you, this is not who you are, this is not how it's supposed to be. It's that light that's trying to come out. It's that light that's saying, Release me. It's that spirit of God that's inside of you saying, that's not really who you are. Brothers and sisters, when God's spirit move and God word hear and see God's spirit, the creative force, the creative power of God overcome any and all darkness that may be there. I'm here to tell you right now, brothers and sisters, you have to speak this. When God said in the darkness, let there be light, you need to begin to speak that into your life. But you must first allow God's spirit to prevail. You must allow God's spirit to come in and overcome those challenges that the world have placed upon you. It's up to you, brothers and sisters, to speak those words, to let there be light. Your finances, your health, your home, let there be light. I believe that God's word stands by, looks for faith all the time. The challenge is your flesh, your flesh, our flesh, resist what God's Spirit is looking for. Trust, belief, faith in Him. Oh, brothers and sisters, today is your day. The hour is your hour. The minute is your minute. Allow God's Word, God's light to overcome that darkness that is trying to keep you back in His life. Let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you again for your yoke destroying anointing. I thank you this day, Father God, for the, the hearers right now, Father God, be it conference call, be it Zoom broadcast, Father. I thank you for your word permeating and getting into their spirits right now, that they feel your yoke destroying anointing enter into their lives right now, that they can begin to replace the sadness with joy, they begin to let the light come in where darkness once prevailed. They begin to, Father God, remove those things that brought tears and turn it into a place that bring happiness into the life. Lord, we thank you today. Your word said, once you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. I'm free today, Father, of knowing that your light and my life are now joined together. That if you're for me, who can be against us? Father, continue to allow us to speak the truth into our life. No matter what we see or what we hear, continue to allow us to say it, let there be light in that area. Because Father God, you are the light. Jesus came, he was the light of the world. And we're followers, we're disciples of that light, Father. Knowing and understanding that we're overcomers, speaking the truth in season as well as out of season. Lord, I thank you today. I thank you for the for those, Father God, who may be in an oppressed state, be reminded that the victory is already yours. Those who are feeling down and out because of their health, the word was sent to heal you and to deliver you. For those who are feeling that their finances are not where they're supposed to be, God has the power to make one rich and add no sorrow unto you. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I want the truth. I want the light to be spoken into our lives. I want that light to prevail no matter what comes our way. I want us to be able to guard our heart in season and out of season, Father. Not just arguing you with our lips. We want that heart to be right there with you. And we thank you today, Father. We thank you today, Father, for being better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. 
Oh, church, I thank you today. It's an honor today to speak God's truth into your life. It's up to you to receive. I thank you. I praise you. I count all these things done this day. Let the church say, Amen. Oh, we serve a good God. We serve a good God. I want to I want to lift up all of our our students that are, are going back to colleges and, and some schools are virtual schools. We got freshmen who are going back to college today here. I know I have my granddaughter. She's down in Miami at the University of Miami, and they start class tomorrow. I, I ask prayers for her, and we have a couple of members uh, of the Jenkins uh, young men. Ethan's at Florida and M, and, and Cal, he's right now doing his virtual going his master's program at Alcorn State. And there would be many others around this city, around your state, that have relatives and children and grandchildren are in this school. And we want to keep them lifted up in prayer during this so-called pandemic, yeah. that, that the Spirit of God prevail, that God's light is over them during these, these early times in their lives, during these educational times in their lives right now. And let them know that our prayers are with them, you know. The Bible says when two or more join together, he's there. And we want his presence always there, not only with us, but for our loved ones who may be abroad or be in another city or even within the same city. But Because we know that we're conquered, we're overcomers, and we want God's light to always be there. So I want to lift up all those students. I have a, a an associate of mine who's right there in Arizona. He's working with the Arapahoe Nation there and doing this pandemic right here. Uh, and I want to lift him up and, and program he's doing with his Apex Solution there and say, Bill Chastain can keep keeping and trusting God. Now trust God all the way. He's the conqueror for you and your product. And so we want to keep that lifted up too. And any other people who are working in your communities right now, trying to trying to assist others who may not be where they need to be, but God has given you the power to assist them. We want you to step out in faith, you know. And, you know, we're blessed based on what we do for ourselves, but what we do for others. I always use this expression, God will get to you what he can get through you. And the challenge is if God, if God won't give you something that's going to stop with you, he'll give you something that he can, you can use and you can also pass on to others. So God can get to you what he can get through you. So I want to lift up you and, and, and be, be a giver. You know, God, Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And we get blessed. We get blessed. The Bible says God said men will give unto you, press down, shake together, and run it over. We will mean give unto you, but all because you're a giver. See, what a man sow, he's going to reap. So we got to keep that in mind. Those are God's life. That's God's spirit. God's spirit is love. Do unto others you have them do unto you. That's not only a golden rule. That should be the only rule for believers right now. And, and that's part of our challenge.